Hello. Hi. Hello, pig and folk. Welcome to um, our lunchtime uh, chat about Yule traditions with the great Lily, sort of Lily Noir, <laughs> who is a, a pagan priestess and has been involved in paganism since you were 18 years old. Probably about 17, 17, 18. Yeah, I'm 42 now, so it's been a few years. And uh, so she has many years of knowledge and practice. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we were chatting about before we went on air was how we met. And uh, I met Lily at my first uh, kaleidoscope at my first pagan festival mm -hmm. and I was a total newbie never been to anything like that totally wide-eyed totally <laughs> naive totally <laughs> believed everything anybody told me <laughs> that that night I went to my first uh, uh, fireplace uh, fire circle bonfire dance etc dancing around the fire and I saw this lovely lady dancing around wearing horns. That would be me. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, they were so realistic looking. And I thought, wow, do, do those actually grow out of her head? Is that what happens when you, <laughs> when you become a real pagan? <laughs> it was so like, you know, so like in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, after we sat down, uh, you sat down to get a drink. I went over and to talk to you and introduced myself. And I said, I just, I just love those horns, but are they real? Did you grow them? <laughs> I don't know if you remember or not. I, I don't remember it actually, but I, after those dances, sometimes you just get into a trance and you just sort of meet people and, you know, you're just so happy and connected to nature and to the moment. You just forget about uh anything really <laughs> well what I, what I loved is what like you, you went like this oh, <laughs> did I? Yeah. and I go that's, oh, funny. that's so cool I gotta make those <laughs> right I remember you being the one that sold all the horns at, at kaleidoscope and saying oh these are so nice and then you said yeah I got the idea from you I said oh I didn't realize that. <laughs> that's funny Mine are a little lopsided this morning. Yeah, it's 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 Sunday, you know. And yeah, you know, Sunday. When, when you're when you're trying to adjust the things on camera, you know, you're doing it like it's it's totally opposite, right? So yeah, backwards. Yeah, so I got a wonky star and wonky horns this morning. <laughs> well, it's lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I was hoping to talk a little bit about the the Yule traditions and yes, yes. yeah. Talk a bit about that. And I'm not used to being on camera talking to a big group of people, more one-on-one. -on -one, so mm -hmm. see how it goes. But uh, it's been a number of years doing kind of earth-based traditions. And one of the cool things I like about that is that I think it's applicable to all human beings on earth because we're all living on the earth. And around this time, you can see some people saying, well, it's got to be Christianity. It's got to be Christmas or it's got to be Kwanzaa. That's what we believe. Or it's Hanukkah or it's Yule and that's it. And one thing I really like about Earth-based traditions is that we're all human beings um, living on this earth, you know, on this blue marble. And we all have things in common. And one of the things we have in common is the, the winter solstice and the summer solstice. So I kind of look through a lot of different traditions to kind of inform what it means and what is this about. And one of the really cool things that I like about it is, is kind of taking cues from the astrological. And what really happens in, in the winter solstice is on that 21st day, uh, there's, there's, you know, a star that just stays still for the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th. Um, and those and three- That's why I put the, this one on. Yes. Put this wreath on. Yes. And then those three stars are, are actually, Christianity called those, you know, the three kings in Orion's belt. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And then basically on the 25th, it re it rises that star. So it stays still, it's dead for three days, then it rises. So there's this concept, you know, that's outside of any tradition, it's, it's universal to all human beings that this is this star and it does it every year. And it has this behavior of uh, dying, staying still and then being resurrected. And you can see the resurrection theme in Christianity uh, with the birth of the sun god and, and he's a resurrection sun god. Um, the wheel of the year, the oak king killing the holly king, um, you know, and, and raining until uh, midsummer. And then the summer half, the winter half of the year, this kind of diurnal pattern. Thing for, for people who are not familiar with the Oak King and the Holly King, what that means, because uh, the problem that a lot of uh, non-pagan people have with us is like, oh, you guys are sacri constantly <laughs> sacrificing and killing each other, you know, oh, yeah. that whole myth, you know, behind it. And I, yeah. I would like you to, 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 to talk about what it really means that we're, we're not, we're not. Yeah, I can give you an example of a ritual actually that that I did probably 20 years ago. And I was talking to a friend of mine that I used to do priest work with uh, just a few hours ago. And we did this ritual where he was, um, he was the the uh, Holly King and he was slain during this reenactment. And, it, and basically we just put a black cover over him and all of us were said, okay, you know, you're symbolically dying because you're the warm half of the year. And right now we're in the dark half of the year. And this is a light thing and, and a seasonal thing too. It's like, um, you know, the seasons, there's a growing season and then there's a season where the earth rests. Um, so, so if, if I could summarize for people who don't know what the uh, Holly King represents, yes. uh, they, uh, the Holly King is the, the winter and the dark, the time of the year mm -hmm. where um, the skies are dark. Yes. Uh, there is less sunlight and more darkness. Yes. And coolly enough on the 21st, like our days are getting darker and darker and everyone feels this, no matter your tradition, it's getting darker and darker and darker. And then on the 21st, after the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, the days start to get longer on the 25th, the sun is reborn, we're getting longer and longer days until the summer solstice. And then they start to get shorter, shorter, shorter until that, that period where it stays still a bit and then, and then comes out. So it is a resurrection uh, in the stars. So in this ritual, I was, I was talking to my friend this morning and he, I said, you know, what's, what's your most fav like favorite Yule gathering we've done together? And he said, the one where I got killed. And you know, you put me on the, <laughs> the one where you put me under the black blanket. And I said, yeah, we, we were going around you. And he said, well, for me, it was very different. And I said, well, what was it like? He said, I was underneath this and I was still and everything around me was moving. And I thought that was really cool um, because I never had that impression of the ritual. Okay. Yeah. So what was cool about it is that if you're in that perspective of being the, the God who has died, it, it's a time for pause. It's a time to see the world going around you, but you can recollect yourself and be born again and come out of it again. Okay, yes. So he said he could just see feet going around and he, he felt very, um, he was still within himself, you know, sort of how the plants are under the ground. They're not dead. They're under the ground and they're waiting. Okay. For the that is super cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for uh, again, for people who are not familiar with paganism, what, what the Holy King represents is the winter and the mm -hmm. dark. Yes. So what does the green man represent? What does, what, what is this, all this green man stuff? <laughs> There's a little picture of him there. Yeah. So, I mean, we still, even though the Holly King is dead, people hang Holly all the time to remind themselves that that, that warm part of the year is going to come back. It's just okay. that kind of pulling back in within yourself and, and coming back forward. Um, I kind of come at it from a lot of different traditions. Um, so Celtic isn't like my number one, a hundred percent, but um, if you focus more on Celtic, I'd like to hear what you think about the Holly King. Um, 
basically that uh, that is the god of the winter. Yes. And that is the god of rest. Mm -hmm. Don't burn out. Mm -hmm. You 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 spend the summer, the the light months, mm -hmm. the, the time of the, the green man, the time of fertility, the time of uh, growth. You yes. Spend that time growing and collecting uh, for the winter because there's uh, in the winter you need those items. There's no. That's right. Activity. The cold shuts down that cycle of growth. Yes. So yes. Uh, the, the summertime is the time to, uh, you know, for projects to grow, yeah. to, to expand, to collect, so that when you come to the time of winter, mm -hmm. you are prepared and you will not starve. Yes. Talking about it in a very, very, you know, basic primitive level it is that you you do all your collection during the the light times of the year during the time yes. of the green man time of growth so that you're prepared to survive through the winter yes and i, I like that in in the myself like i live in a, in a more of a cabin environment so i'm collecting wood all year and so the yule log has a lot of meaning for me i have enough wood I'm thankful, I'm grateful when I have my fire going, it's giving me warmth, it's giving back. So it's almost like the work that you put into the year, you can harvest that in a different way. Like you yeah. can enjoy what you've yeah. prepared and think about what you wanna do next year, what do you wanna do differently? And I think no matter what tradition you belong to, if you're Christian, if you're Jewish, if no matter what uh, tradition, um that's something in common we kind of come together and and renew and think about you know what has this year become people even set new year's resolutions in january you know how can this new year be different i think that's a very old 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 tradition um so we look at you know what have, what have we done where do we want things to go and it's a time of resurrection within ourselves to create a new self and become a better person for the year. It's a really great concept. And we have the time kind of huddled in with our families um, or inside because it's cold <laughs> to really reflect and think about that. How do we want to resurrect ourselves in the new year? I, I think uh, in relation to, you know, the COVID, mm -hmm. what is what has happened for us is uh, I took a trip be just before COVID happened. I took a trip to visit uh, a sacred place where mm -hmm. one of my uh, my deities. Uh, it was the it was the realm of one of my deities, um, and uh, uh, while I was there, I kept getting this message because I I I was in a actually. When I was there, I was in a hurry to see everything possible I could, and we were like, we were traveling so fast that uh, you know, we were in a different spot every day. And when we finally came to that sacred place, I had only uh, like a half an hour before the sunset Ooh. to actually set my intention to to uh, respect for the goddess and that. And the one message that I came that came from that is slow down mm -hmm. there's gonna be a big big slow down mm -hmm. slow down everybody slow down mm -hmm. so yes. for us in a sense our winter came early oh it's been a whole year of winter <laughs> it's the whole like in in the old days when we like when we were growing up you know we would hear about nuclear winter and how terrible mm -hmm. it was but mm -hmm. no none of us i think ever expected to have this kind of a winter yes yes and i hear a lot of people talking about that that this has made them more reflective and thinking about that concept of resurrect resurrection and refinement within themselves and how can i change my way of thinking how can i change my behaviors how can i look back into the past and find things that need refining or in my current life and and reset and regroup uh, to make my life better so hopefully um it's been positive in some ways for us to to reflect um i think for myself the 
the traditions that I like to do, I'm not really materialistic. I like to spend um, a lot of time uh, baking cookies with my son. I'll decorate the trees outside for the animals. Um, I like to have a good period of time off to just kind of reset my whole self um, and, and take time to reflect. Like my friend under that blanket. I love that image, you know, he told me, he shared with me. It's like you can just cover yourself up and see the world going around. And what, you know, what perspective is that? You know, it's so different. And and thinking about that, I've spent more time in bed under the covers during COVID yes. than any other time in my life. So <laughs> Rest and restore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's only like in the last two weeks that, it, well, not two weeks, but last month or so that I've been really working hard at this, that mm -hmm. I realized how busy regular life is. You know? <laughs> how busy. And, and uh, you know, it's so important to have that balance between the two. So. And winter <laughs> allows us to do that. Winter allows us to sit back. Yes. And, and, and recollect ourselves. Yes. And I think that that process makes us better people, better parents, better human beings, you know, better members of community um, to be able to, to, to not have all that frenetic energy and just re come back to the self and reconnect with the self. Um, and you see that a lot with with any solar gods or any so, you know, solar concepts is that the idea that you need to rest, you need to have the day and the night, you have the, the good and the evil, you have these kind of dualities and where do you lie in between when you look at those dualities of so busyness and rest and external, internal. So there's a lot of that that happens at the solstices that brings that to light. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a bit, a bit about this is a very old concept, but you know, uh, the tree, the tree. Yeah. What? You know, we know Christmas tree. Yeah. But why did, where did that idea of the Christmas tree evolve and how is it yeah. changed through paganism? As far, as far as I can tell from what I've read, is that there are all the other trees die, but that tree has kind of eternal life like all those evergreens they don't lose their needles they last so they kind of give us the hope and the promise that the light although the light is diminishing although everything outside is dead life continues on we're not death is not the end things resurrect we continue on with our lives and even when everything is crashing down around us there's hope um, it's sort of all the themes of, of you all kind of line up with that like the candles um, you know, light within the darkness. Um, but I think the the Yule tree, a lot of it is that evergreen concept of just never, it, it's, even though it's the darkest of, of the time of the year, it, it's, there's still light, there's still life and, and to have hope through it and to stay, to stay still uh, through it. We just had a, a guest, Seema. Oh. Lovely to, uh, lovely to have you have, you join us. Hi. Yeah, and Hi, uh, do you have any questions for for Lily or myself, Seema? Because uh, we're all we're here. We're not going anywhere. We're just chatting. Yes, if people have any questions for myself or for Lily, please uh, ask us. We are yeah. not. We're not going to Las Vegas. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to hear about other people's traditions too. Like what's the most um, important tradition for, that, that you guys do over the, the holiday period or the. Well, um, I am. Um, I belong to the red maple grove, which is a Druidic grove. Um, mm. And uh, for the past. Oh, for many years now. Um, for Yule, what we would do is we would uh, get together. Mm -hmm. um, around six o'clock, and we would have a special meal. Mm -hmm. It was a potluck, and uh, it was—it's very much like Christmas, but at night, um, on on the uh, on the uh, Yule twenty-first, mm -hmm. twentieth, twenty-first, twentieth. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, we would get together when it got dark, 
Mm -hmm. Wonderful meal. And then we would exchange gifts. Mm -hmm. And then we would have this horrible sing along because we would try to sing, you know, pagan songs. And <laughs> I'm sorry, but, that time but I know every time. pagan sing-along I've ever been to, it's always horrible in ways. <laughs> but it's not so, the point of it. <laughs> by that time, we will have a lot, had a lot of mead, so kind of be sound deaf, so it won't matter anyway. Yes. And uh, then the idea is to stay up late. Yeah. As late as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is to stay awake all night to create mm. a new light. Oh, that's nice. And uh, we, when uh, it was about half an hour before the new light, mm -hmm. we would go out and we would start our ritual. Oh, that's nice. So as we were doing our ritual, mm -hmm. the sunlight would be coming up. And we oh, would that's beautiful. Yeah. The beginning of the light. Oh, it sounds so nice. Yeah. I miss a lot of the group work that we used to do. Um, right now with COVID, we kind of can't do that. Um, yeah, Sina will definitely, I think Dodge is going to do some readings perhaps in a little while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I miss the group rituals. That's one thing I, I don't like about COVID <laughs> is yes. that we kind of all have to do our own traditions all the time. Um, there's something very special about getting together with a group of people. Yeah, it's like everyone has become a solitaire now. Yes, yes, which is tiring at times. Yes, it yeah. is. And yeah. that is one of the reasons I, I, I started this group was because uh, we need our connection. Mm-hmm. As much as I like, I'm a ambivert, which mm -hmm. is I love people, but then at one point I've had enough of them, and I go, yeah. I have to, I have to go back, I have to retreat. Much like I have to have my own winter, yes, in order to revive. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, uh, this has been a very long winter, so mm -hmm. um, creating this group is very selfish. It's for me to get those connections. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we, we are human beings live for connection. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not clever enough for an animal to survive alone. That's very true. Yes. I'd like to see a lot more going on with the community um, in some way and until this is all over. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it's a good time to reflect. We're getting a whole year of the winter energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, we do plan to have like, uh, um, I think that uh, to, when there's uh, in on the twentieth, we're having a another full moon, so mm -hmm. we'll be having readings mm -hmm. on the full moon and uh, maybe some chit chats like this. Um, yeah, and uh, a little bit of ritual. So everyone is welcome. That'd be great. And, uh, uh, I'm hoping that uh, either I'm here or I'm in Edmonton. I'm hoping things get better because I'd like to visit my family. But oh. either way, we'll have some kind of uh, get together online on the 20th. Mm -hmm. That's um, good. Yeah, I, I enjoy this time of year. I'm really looking forward to it. I've got a couple more weeks of work where I'm really hectic and then I have some time and I'm just going to rethink, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to spend some time cooking. I'm going to decorate some Yule trees outside. I have a lot of trees out here that I uh, make various things and hang them up for the animals. And I love to see them eating those and just some basic things like that really help me get connected to the spirit of the season for myself so yeah mm -hmm. I, I i'm kind of envious of your place i have just a stand of of uh, of yew trees which are very lovely yes um but a stand of yew trees around my porch and that's it because the the people who do the lawn maintenance came and cut down my my i had a little walnut black walnut sprite sapling 
Oh, they cut it down. They cut it. Oh, that's not right. Yeah. I have a lot of cedar in the forest here. There's 25 acres. The cedar is a lot. So there's a lot of evergreen kind of feel. So when I go out, it looks like Christmas trees everywhere. So I don't have a Christmas tree, a Yule tree inside uh, the house. Um, I just decorate the outside ones. Well, I, I think that's good because, you know, cutting down trees right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, some people, they, they cut them, but then those farms usually grow them back, thankfully. So, you know, it allows everybody to reconnect with the nature in a way. And I, I think that's nice to do, but um, I like to do it outside. It, it, I have a small place, so it works. <laughs> cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. So, so I do that. I'm planning to do that. I'm probably going to do a lot of um, thinking about, you know, the next year and my work-life balance, my family life balance, what do I need internally to, to feel good this year? Um, and I need a couple of weeks to kind of figure that out <laughs> without the pressures of life, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to do. And thankfully I can, but even if you have a day, I mean, I think even having a day, I know it can be a busy time of year, but just even getting one day, to kind of regroup and think about what you need to do to make your life happier. It's, it's really a good festive time for that. So I think I need a, a virtual cook. and oh. <laughs> Nice. Yes. Yeah. So I'll be happy when they create one of those. I see uh, Lillian's popped up there. Okay. Time for a break with video. Okay. 55 second break with video. All right. We'll be back in 55 seconds. Sounds After good. The video. Back. I'm back <laughs> and we are talking about the traditions of Yule and uh, we're also talking about what we're what our plans are for Yule mm -hmm. um, and how to do it as a solitaire because many of us are going to be solitaire this year because mm -hmm. we're unable to travel I always thought you know that um, the one beautiful thing about being alone if you are alone, is that you have the opportunity to create things and make make a mess without upsetting anybody. <laughs> that, uh, like, if you think about creation, about you know all our creation stories, uh, nothing was created out of a neat ordered universe. No. That, no. Uh, that you you need kind of chaos before the. Yes creation yes exactly it's interesting because i'm trying to remember the cards the way they go i'm pretty sure death is 13 it's 14 art i can't remember how that all goes yes it is so i always think of like something something needs to Something needs to, to die in order to have that creation and that the yes. art, right? Very oh, true. You can see those. Very true. <laughs> There's a, a lady, Candice Noel, who has come up to our program, and uh, she is asking for some guidance. Okay. I, I'm uh, I'm just going to ask her a couple of questions uh, so we can get a, a, a grounding. Sure. 
So, I pulled uh, my cards out too, so I can play yeah, if you guys want me to. <laughs> so, uh, um, first of all, Candice, it, could you give us a, an idea of what um, astrological sign you are? Like, I'm, a, I'm a, a Gemini, and uh, I don't know. Are you a Sagittarius or a Virgo? <laughs> me or her? Oh, sorry, you. Sorry, Lily. I'm a Libra. Libra, and I have okay. Gemini Moon and Aquarius Rising. So I'm just a big ball That's there. That's why we connect because you have that Gemini Moon. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, so Candace is saying that she's a Scorpio. Um, Lily, would you like to take this one? Oh, um, just to one card. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. I can pull, I have, I was just sorting my other deck. I have two decks here. I have the, I have the toss deck, which I use, but I was okay. just sorting that out. So it's not fully organized, but I also have this really cool deck that I like. Um, that is a Stephen Farmer. It's just fun. It's a spirit guide animal one. And I really like it. Uh, it's perfect for like a one card pull. So yes, Candace, don't worry. We are we are doing a little reading for you right now. Hi, Candace. Oh, her name is Noel. That's so cool because that's yes. French for for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I'll pull something. I haven't used these ones in a while. A Scorpio. I like Scorpios. Oh, they're straight to the point. Yes. Yeah, there's no beating around the bush sometimes, unless they want to, and then they will beat around the bush. Uh, Noelle is, uh, Candace is saying that her middle name is Noelle. Her middle name is? Noelle. 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 Oh, so okay. Is, isn't that lovely? That's pretty. Here, I'm in the sun. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Noelle, Yule, Christmas. Okay. Cool. Okay. So this is kind of a fun card. This one is, this one is, um, I don't know if you can see because the sun, but it's the dog. I don't know if you like dogs or if you have a connection to dogs. Um, so it says on this card, your loyalty and faithfulness is misplaced by serving too many masters. Maybe you're feeling torn in a bunch of different directions. Um, maybe you feel like you've got to choose between two different people right now. Um, or a job and your family, sort of. Oh, she loves dogs. Great. Yeah. So, yeah, so the dog is great because they have that loyalty. They have that faithfulness. They'll do anything for anybody. That's their kind of spirit. But um, if you feel torn between having to serve too many people, you're, you're, you're split apart, your energies are too dispersed, um, that can be difficult to, to try and uh, be loyal and faithful if you feel like you have to kind of give that out to too many different people in too many different places. So I guess the, the direction of this card would be to pull within, figure out where your loyalty and faithful, faithfulness needs to really go. Um, maybe you're your own master, and that's what this is telling you, to be your own master. So I hope that, I hope that helps. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense for you. I find these are pretty dead on, They're actually. Dead on, yeah. uh, so, Lily, I'm going to pull, uh, pull something from my bag of uh, magic sure. items for you yes um i'm we're just gonna finish sima we're just gonna finish up uh, uh our uh oh our, yes sima yeah um so sima. i'm going to just uh sima wants to know as well she's posting up there about the residency so i'm gonna just pull something this is uh for Candice Noel. This oh, okay. is a, a carnelian. It's a raw carnelian. The carnelian. Well, there we go. And this has to do with your second chakra. It has to do with um, 
creativity, but it also has to do with passion. Passion can be very raw. Passion um, has nothing to do with common sense. Uh, passion is hard on you, just like rock. It's it's something that feels soft, but it's uh, it it can be energizing. But if the energy is not is is hard, it's a kind of energy that won't not sustain you. Like you need, like we were talking about summer and growth and earth. Um, though, though this is an earth element, it's hard. Nothing will grow from this. So you need to, again, pay attention to what kind of energy allows you to grow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Candace is saying oh. she, she gives all her energy and loyalty to her husband. Ah. Yes. I'm going to pull one more for you and see where this is going to be to give you a direction. So, I hope whatever happens, Candace, that uh, it works out the best for you. So I've gotten the blue feather. And that is, the feather is the air and uh, the blue color is the uh, third eye the, uh, the chakra of the third eye um, perhaps Lily you can comment a bit about what the third eye energy is about yeah it's kind of like it's, it's intuition it's uh, being able to have insight into um, bigger patterns bigger patterns within your life bigger patterns uh, connecting to your own divine self, your own divine intuition. Um, so looking within, I think that's what that's really saying, to find your own guidance, connecting to your higher self. The next thing um, that came up was the crossroads with the rose. Oh. So again, it's talking that when you're at the crossroads, you have to make a decision. Um, and one of these paths will lead to something sweeter, something more passionate, but it's the decision that hurts. Mm. Any decision you make, very, very few decisions are, um, are Hollywood kind of decisions without consequences. <laughs> um, they are, they are real and they do they do make, they, they are difficult. Mm -hmm. So uh, Lily, I'm wondering if you can pull out a card for her again. Sure. As far as to the future goes. Okay, so this is the elk. And Seema, we'll get to you, okay? <laughs> we see you. This is the elk, quite beautiful. Um, so the suggestion on the L card is to stand tall and maintain your dignity no matter what. Um, and others will treat you with the respect you deserve. So um, yes, letting go. So, and that's interesting. You just wrote, you'll deserve better. So that's yes, this is exactly. about getting what you deserve, right? So that's the animal cards are speaking to you today, Candace Noel. <laughs> So standing tall, maintaining your dignity no matter no matter what, um, and others will treat you with that respect. Maybe that helps you make your decision if, if you know um, how to stand tall within yourself and if you keep that in your mind frame, then you're able to um, move forward and make the right decision that works for you, focus on, focusing on yourself. And this is a lady okay. who, who knows what she's talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, Seema, yes. Seema, we see you. <laughs> we see you. And I'm sorry for having to, to make you wait because when you first posted the question, I, 
I didn't understand. I thought that maybe you, um, you were asking. My background is teaching English as a second language and in, in, in immigration, that, but that's like 20 years ago. So when I first saw your question, I kind of responded to it very intellectually and not emotionally. I didn't realize that you were asking an actual question that you wanted mm -hmm. a reading for. Because that's just my my gut reaction because I've been trained that way. Mm -hmm. So I apologize. We are here for you and we are going to give you an answer. Yes. So uh, shall I go first this time? Sure. Sure. Okay. So Seema, um, let me know uh, what kind of... Uh, I've got my hand in the magical bag now. And I, I would like to know what kind of... Uh, texture do you want me to look for in terms of your answer like do you want me to pick something soft do you want me to pick something natural do you want me to pick something uh glass or would you like me to pick something that uh it, like something like a like a feather or uh something round um i'm just gonna wait to hear your response because I see that there's a delay in um, in what we see on screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just let me know if there's a particular texture you're looking for. And I'm going to wait like, a couple minutes to to see what you write. If not, I'll ask uh, um, Lily to answer that question because I sure. need some more um, information in order to get a good from you in order to get a good answer. Yeah. Natural. Okay. I have a piece of amber and uh, if you look at it okay let's see if we can get closer it's a beautiful little piece of amber mm -hmm. and it has all these little fish scales in it so amber um, represents the gut chakra like the, the third chakra the gold and gold is just a beautiful energy it's the energy of the sun it's the energy of brightness it's the energy of um, the old and the new together um, if you think of how amber was created geologically it is the resin of ancient pine trees from thousands like maybe millions of years ago um, that uh, over time is compressed into a gemstone. Uh, this pine resin sometimes also mixes with uh, the remains of uh, a fish, which gives it, when you look at an amber bead and see like little scales in it, well, that is the remains of uh, an ancient fish. So it is both earth and sea together. Um, to explain what that means is, I think that your 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 situation, um, that that bead in itself talks about having come a great distance from an old place to a new place, and the fact that it is golden, and it's like uh, old knowledge in a, a new place. The fact that the color is golden. Um, is very fortuitous. It's very positive for you. So I, I'm thinking that this will work. This will work. Um, I'm going to ask Lily to pull a card for you to add some dimension. Yes. To the, the uh, reading. Um, I pulled uh, the manatee and the camel, interestingly. Um, so the camel, it's a very pretty card. And um, the phrase on it is trust that you have the resources. Um, sorry for that noise. <laughs> the, 
trust that you have the resources um, to get through the challenges before you. Um, so this card is really, the camel has that water on his back. He's carrying it through um, a difficult time. So it's having resources, getting through. There's a lot of waiting with camels. It's like a trek through the desert. So you've been waiting for a long time for this. Um, you've been hoping for a long time for something to come forward and you're having to kind of pull on your storage, your own storage. Maybe there's a financial component of you having to wait this, this situation out. Um, you do have the resources to get through this, regardless of kind of what way it goes, you're going to be okay. Um, you are a strong person. I can tell from this and, um, you know, you will get through this time. It's going to be challenging, but you will get through. Um, the other one I pulled is the manatee. Um, so that one's really pretty as well. And the manatee is accepting the situation as it is rather than fighting to change it. So regardless what way it goes, um, I think it's acceptance and understanding of where you're at and don't fight to make it different. Um, I suspect given the situation, oh, one and a half years waiting, that's so long. Hmm. But I wonder what's like, what's the best way to go forward if you've been waiting that long? It's such a long time. I know um, years ago that that it does it does take a, a long time to yeah. get the residency. I, I had, yeah. a, had a partner at one point a, 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 that uh, came here as a refugee. Mm -hmm. um, it took him three years, but he, wow. got it. he got it. Oh, wow. That's a long time. But well, I would get it. Asked, Seema, in, in your wait here, and I think it's trying to find those resources to get you through this waiting period um, might be a good thing. Do you, do you want us to pull one more card to, for some guidance for you through this time period? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is someone different. Oh, this, this is, is someone Gidget. different. Gidget. Gidget. Okay. Um, I'm just, my, my energy is still connected with what Seema yes. was asking. Yeah. So if Gidget, if you can give us a cup, uh, okay. Uh, Seema has uh, responded and she's still talking about the time. Uh, still one and a half year waiting. Mm -hmm. So, um, hmm. Why don't we, why don't we do something simultaneously? Sure. Cool. So I'm, I have my hand in the bag and uh, I'm looking for something. I'm going to, I'm going to think about this little piece of shell keeps coming up for me. Okay. I, I have an olive shell. Well, there, olive mm -hmm. shell. And, uh, it's beautiful. Well, olive shell talks about in a way, it's a, it's the house for the animal that lives in it. Mm. And, uh, uh, it's uh, both an earth and a water element because uh, shells, mollusks who live in the shells can live um, for a little bit of, for some time without the water and uh, the rest of the time in the ocean. So they are it's kind of like your situation you you can you can be here for you, every time you get your your uh permit renewed for for uh for staying here you know it's like it's like you've got you've got that time where you're back in the water um but then when uh the water the tide comes up and it uh it, uh, when the tide recedes, you're kind of feeling like you're on dry land. But the important thing here is that the shell itself is the home for the mollusk that uh, 
as uh, Lily was saying that you do have resources mm -hmm. and with these situations, like I know from, from being an English ESL teacher and working in that area, that it does take time, mm -hmm. it's just a matter of time and um, perseverance. And mm -hmm. that is really difficult at this point, you know, um, I would say just keep doing all the positive things that you've been doing. It's a, it's a case of repetition and hanging in there. No matter, you know, you're going to have these waves of emotion. Like, like water is like waves of emotion. And then you're going to have the dry periods. But there's always yourself that is the home. That... Uh, to kind of depend on yourself. Oh, that's so interesting. You're a Pisces. Ha! Ha! That is wild. That is so cool. So, yeah. So, you do have the strength. You do have the strength. Um, and think of the ways that that help you best. Like, what do you do? What helps you to persevere? What kind of activities take your mind off of the, the situation because uh, a busy mind is great but a busy mind that keeps fretting over the same question can be a detriment so just being kind of possessed by needing an answer is stressful in itself keep doing what you're doing um, you know, if you need help from a lawyer, get the help from a lawyer. If you need help, find other people that have been in your situation and get advice from them as well. Um, that's where the community is. So um, that's what I, I'm feeling for you, that, that it'll happen, but it, it just takes time. Yes, I know we lost Lily. Um, I'm just uh, waiting to see if we can get her back. Um, I hope that's helpful. So, um, yes, okay. Oh, I need to make an announcement. Um, at uh, 5.30 p.m. today, uh, the wonderful Lillian Carrere is going to be doing live mini readings. Um, and she is, uh, her, her uh, association is angelic empowerment so she will be with the angel cards um and the empowerment part of her service like she's not just flipping angel cards randomly she's also a trained social services worker so she has counseling background and she's very down to earth and very practical and she's a capricorn she's gonna find solutions for you so we have Lily back. Sorry, guys, my battery died there. Oh, no problem. But we do have uh, time for a 55 second break. Anyway, we were coming up with the video. Okay. So Sorry about that, guys. Seema, no best problem. wishes with your transitions there. Priestess, pagan priestess, and also an amazing tarot card reader. And she does come from a professional background of counseling. Um, and I myself have a background in social work counseling. So we're not just 
we're grounded in what we do. <laughs> Not fluffy, airy angel clouds and stuff like that. So <laughs> all those things are fun now. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Here we are. Um, Egypt. We have time to do more. How yeah. where are we at for time? Um we're at one twenty five. So um we're actually we've got quite a bit of time for good okay. because uh, I had to move the schedule around. We had some adjustments. I always try to adjust for people who have children because children come first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Gidget, how can we help you today? What What is your question? What What question would you like answered? Bit of guidance. Um, hope, okay. Yes, Sima. We are we are we are rooting for you. Yes, Sima. Yeah. Prayers for you. And keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, Gidget, is there a specific question you would like us to answer, or would you just like us to do a, a, a random reading for you? Okay. Wait for the feedback. I'm Here's looking very much. I'm looking for help with my life, such confusion with my relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Relationships can be so confusing, Gidget. Yeah. So hard to know yourself and figure out your own path, let alone to figure out someone else's and how the two mesh up. It's amazing anyone has a relationship in the first place. <laughs> So shall we do another one simultaneously? Sure. Yeah, I'm just getting my. I do my stick with my animal cards. They're they're working. Yeah, they're me. really great. I really. They're like fun, them. huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got animals here. Come on. Do you want to be on a live video? That's the the most lovely cats and the, an amazing dog. <laughs> so a guy will help me. He always wants to hang out when I'm talking to people. All right. Oh, he's rubbing the the laptop. Don't do that. You'll make it all. You'll make it all messed mm -hmm. up, buddy. No. <laughs> oh, kittens. All right, good job. Gonna pull a card here for you. These are my animal cards. I like them a lot, just for fun. I, I find they have a lot of message and a lot of meaning. Okay. So she's so I do have something that's talking about your present. Um, if you can see that, mm. that's a calcite. That's a that's an earth element. That is a very interesting crystal type stone. Whenever uh, it's kind of a, a rhombus, but it's a square. Um, whenever a square shows up in a reading, it has to do with house and home. Um, and, uh, if it's a complete, like if it's a square, when I'm talking about a square, like a perfect square, it's kind of, uh, that's not a perfect square, but whenever there's a, a square that is perfectly square, that talks about a home that is, um, it's it's a sound home whenever we get a, a square that's a rhombus that's kind of like a house that's that's a little tippy mm. that's the, interesting um, the clearness of it it's like glass you can see right through it so it is a very kind of a fragile type of of home and like yes you are at a crossroads so this is just reflecting what where you are right now. I'm going to pull one more to get an idea of where, just some advice as to where to go. Can I do my card? And then you can do, uh, do you want to go first fully or do you want to go take turns? We have... 
a broom. <laughs> we have a broom. So when we have the broom, it talks about cleaning, cleaning, metaphorically cleaning house. So cleaning up your space, cleaning, um, clearing your space of the things that would cause you difficulty. Why, why do we clean house? I don't know. I, I could live in chaos all day long. I don't care, you know, <laughs> but I live alone, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there, there, the spiritual connection to cleaning house is cleaning away things that you no longer need, that no longer serve you, that no longer have purpose for you. The number one relationship in your life is not with someone else. The number one relationship is with yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we clean house, we clean ourselves and we rid ourselves of the things that we no longer need. Um, Lily, could you pull a card for her now? Yeah, I have a couple. The one I first picked was the mountain goat. It's a very pretty card. Um, the mountain goat says, there's something out of balance in your life, so do whatever you need to do to correct it. So in this case, in regards to your relationship, perhaps there's something out of balance going on there, um, and you need to correct it, and otherwise you're going, mountain goats are on these big cliffs, they could fall right off if they're not very careful as to how they're going. So there might be something precarious feeling about you, about your life and it's really important and essential to get uh, your balance in order to uh, correct that balance in order to make a decision. Uh, if you don't feel like you're sure-footed, mm -hmm. it might be very difficult to make a decision. Um, and the second one I pulled was the walrus. Um, and it's wisdom is to remain vigilant about the current situation to pay attention to signs and omens and let them dictate your choices. So paying attention to the signs, being vigilant, being aware, thinking about your balance, um, doing what you need to do to correct your balance in order to make some good steps and some, some good decisions um, and paying attention to those signs, what, it, what is going on, what kind of signs and omens are coming up for you and, and gathering your guidance from that. Um, signs and omens could be something like, oh, you know, I see an owl like, three times this week and I normally don't, but it could be something like um, symbols in your dreams that are coming up. Um, it could be um, signs within people's behavior, you know, well, he's not listening or he's shutting down and he's always ignoring me and he's always looking at his phone or something like that, right? So it could be those types of pictures that keep repeating and interpreting those in order to, to get your balance back and, and letting people can say a lot of things with their words, but their actions speak uh, yes, their much actions louder. Speak louder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I would say with, that, with the walrus. I don't know why that's the walrus, but. I am yeah. the walrus. Yeah, <laughs> I, I always watch those shows with the walrus. They're all together. I guess they have to be very vigilant because everyone has these big tusks and they could, lash out at any moment so yeah I, i'm curious your your uh your partner what do you know his uh, his uh, astrological sign at all gidget what is your partner's astrological sign ha huh. look at that Ah, we got the goat. Hey, isn't that cool? A mountain goat yeah, and Capricorn. I thinking of. I oh, in that light, maybe he, maybe that card was about him. Uh, maybe he needs to become more balanced and sure footed. Maybe he's not sure about his situation. Oh, you're a Cancer. Yeah. Cancers are my favorite. <laughs> and yeah. Like the walrus is, is a water animal. Water animal. Yeah. That makes sense that I pulled those two. That's, that makes a lot of sense. So I, I think with Capricorns, if they don't feel like they have their life in order and they don't feel, and then with men in general, they don't feel like they have everything organized and in order within themselves, they can lash out at other people. 
and and really make everything disruptive because uh, they need to feel solid and stable and and like you know their job is good their 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 money situation is good if that's not stable feeling for them it can be very difficult to be around uh, a Capricorn or male Capricorn <laughs> yeah so what is the issue with the house I'm, I'm curious what is it is it um, did you just buy a house or are you attempting to sell a house? Yeah. He's difficult. Ah, uh, how to release okay. it. Hmm. Yeah. So, I'm not sure. Separate houses. Oh, he thinks okay. you should be there. All right. So he's needing you. Mm -hmm. um, may I ask what what you do? What is your role in the relationship? Are you the person who's responsible for the house? For the upkeep of the house? Mm. Finish my house and find something for him. Um, is he expecting you to look after his house? The reason I'm asking is because of the broom that came up earlier. Yeah, that broom. Sometimes I hate the delay, you know, in real life, you, you get that answer so much, so much more spontaneous. Been to get, okay, we have been together to for 18 house. years, but separate houses. And yes, he wants me to take care of his house. <laughs> All right. You know, Gidget, it's so funny because uh, I, I've heard from so many people after the child rearing years, a lot of the times, like, men want to live with women and women are like, no, nah, I want to, I want to live alone. Like I like my peace. I like my stability, but like more and more, like men are like, no, I want to live together. And it's like, you want us to do your laundry. Don't you yeah, exactly. <laughs> cook your meals, get it all sorted for you. Like what is that the deal? <laughs> it's funny. Everybody needs a wife, not just. Yeah. I wouldn't mind. Men. You know, everybody <laughs> wants a wife, not just men. <laughs> yeah so okay. here's a new person i hope that helps that uh i can't remember her name gidget i hope that helps you gidget okay we have a well, if gidget comes back we'll we'll put our focus on getting another pulling another card and another for her if that's all right with you okay yeah okay all right there yeah, yeah. told me to keep my own digs. Oh, your aunt is a wise woman. Yes. One of the things that I've been doing while we've been talking is I've had my hand in the bag and I have come up with, these are little Celtic runes that I made for myself. This one, well, Celtic Ogham, they're, 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 uh, divination beads from uh, the Celtic uh, tradition. This one is a rabbit, and on it it has a fay. Which is a, I, I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. The wing, the wing and the body. So what the rabbit talks about, it's green and it's the heart. The rabbit talks about that, you know, fight or flight energy. Um, so, and these are made of wood, and wood is, is a major construction element in the house. So, you know, it, it, it ties into that feeling like I, either I fight to, to stay here 
or I just run. Yeah. Run. Um, is there a question of control for you, uh, Gidget? I'm just going to keep going because the next thing was uh, a butterfly. And the butterfly talks about transformation. She passed. Oh, away. your aunt passed. <gasps> oh. 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 oh, yeah. Yes, He's controlling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The last one was the first tree. Mm. And the first tree uh, is the rabbit again that wants to run wants to run mm -hmm. the first tree on is that tree is a protect uh, what first is really is like a it's a tree with it's like a burdock it has it creates uh like little spines on it so it talks about protection so protect yourself Mm -hmm. Protect yourself. Do what you can to protect yourself. Like I said, the number one relationship you have in your life is with you. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> Could you pick one more card? For I did have the one last one, and okay. it was, uh, it's Ladybug. Ladybug, okay. Which is nice. I like the Ladybug. The ladybug says that it's a time of good fortune and abundance. Be willing to receive all good things in your life. Um, so, uh, I think maybe it's time to allow yourself to kind of receive good things and to not be led by, by others. And so in a application to this situation, not being made to kind of go and do what other people want you to do, but to follow yourself. Yes. Protecting yourself, receiving the good things in your life. So focusing back on who is good to you? Um, how can you be good to yourself? How can you be kind to yourself um, and nurture yourself and keep safety around yourself so that you're able to um, move forward with whatever other direction you have? Um, and if if that's with him, then that's one way, but it has to be when he's he's giving you good things. He's one of those good things good avenues in your life. If he's not a good avenue in your life and he's not going to nurture you, um, I think it makes sense to to make that path of wherever it needs to go for you. We're, um, unfortunately, we're having coming up to a 30 second break where we have okay. a little bit of a, an advertisement for one of our upcoming vendors. So sure. 30 seconds and we'll be back. I have to plug in because I am losing power now. <laughs> we'll see you soon. I think she's plugging in there. <laughs> Dorothy will be back in a minute. I'm glad that was helpful, Gidget. Hi, Sonia. What was your original question, Sonia? I didn't see. Hello, welcome back. Hello. <laughs> Sonia has posted, um, I'm a Gemini, he's an Aquarius. I've been feeling really emotional, but she didn't, uh, I didn't see the original question. Yeah, we couldn't see the original question. Hey, hey. <laughs> there we go. I want to know about me and my boyfriend on our relationship as last night, he's been really struggling with his past and issues. What do I do? Okay. Let me see. Okay, let's do this simultaneously again. This is fun, eh? Yeah, it's fun to do a duo. What do you see for me and my boyfriend's as last boyfriend 
Hey, wait, there's BFS. Is there boyfriends? Okay. Uh, as last night, he's been very negative about his past. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if the BFS plural means that there's more than one. BF, okay, no. <laughs> okay. He's struggling with his past. Yeah. Okay, so I, I have something now. Sure. So what I what I pulled, this is very interesting. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> this is um ooh. This is a really neat little little bee that I collected. It's from um a wedding that uh, okay, that was 2009. So how many years that's like wow, that's a long time. Uh, oh about 2009, a young couple came to me and they'd been living together for about 10 years and they wanted to get married and they wanted me to make their, the wedding wreath, the wed wedding crown, her wedding mm -hmm. crown and make some, uh, some of the wreaths and uh, flowers. And I said, sure, I'd love to do it, but I, I'm, I'm like, why do you want to get married when you're already you're, you're living together and everything's going well? You know, because sometimes when people get married and then everything goes to hell. <laughs> um, and they said, well, we love each other. We've been boyfriend and girlfriend since high school. We know there's no one else for us that we are life partners and we want people to uh, see, to, to, um, we want some validation for our relationship. And I said, okay. So I made them the wreath and stuff. And I, I was very doubtful that it would last, but it did. It did. It's been going on as far as I know for years now. And they were very kind of different people. He was very like ADHD and excitable and he was uh, very mercurial. He's, he, he would change back and forth. And she was like like a rock. Mm. Um, she was very very steady. And uh, I thought, no, no, this is not going to work. But the thing about m Mercury and Earth is that Mercury is not quite liquid and not quite solid. But when it does hit Earth, it does kind of the earth kind of stabilizes it. So uh, I think that, uh, well, could you tell me again what, what signs you are? You're, okay, so he was Aqu Aquarius and you are, let me rem remember what you were. Um, okay, you just want to see what is for you and okay. So, um, what I was thinking, what I was getting was, this still keeps coming up. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I don't, I don't think that, I don't feel like there's a problem. Um, I think what, what, if you're thinking that it's going to break up, I don't think that there's a problem in that. I think that I'm going to let Lily pull the next card. Yeah, I, I pulled um, I pulled the mirror connect, um, and this is interestingly enough getting support from a trusted group of like-minded friends. So maybe this is his problem, Sonia, and he needs to sort it out. But it doesn't need to be your problem together. Maybe he needs to go and do some things on his own. As an Aquarius, that's always very important to Aquarius people to be able to go off on their own and uh, sort it all out. And in that way, they can kind of push you away. When they're stressed out, they push you away, and then you're on your own going, oh, is there something wrong with the two of us? Maybe, Dorothy, you're pulling that one because there's nothing wrong with them, but it's more your own your own stuff, Sonia, that, that he's triggering you in this sense, perhaps, with his own difficulty. 
Um, so the meerkat is saying kind of go to your friends, get some support um, from your like-minded friends so that you can you can find your own support through this, not leaning on him, but, but your own resources. And that leaves him to be able to kind of find his own way through this. Maybe you don't have to be the one uh, doing it. Oh, hinting a proposal next year. You don't feel it would happen. So because of his turmoil, it sounds like you're not feeling as though um, your partnership is, is on course. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, the other one I pulled was the honeybee, which I really like. Um, yeah, you don't want it to drag on. The honeybee is let compassion and forgiveness be your top priority in the situation. So perhaps having your own supports and just offering him compassion and forgiveness um, for the way that he's injuring your relationship right now with his own issues. If he's got to go and sort those things out on his own, um, maybe that compassion and forgiveness is going to be what heals the relationship right now because he's so focused inward into his own injury and healing his own injury. Uh, but it's important for you to get support because when someone's well, then those couples really give each other all that support. And you don't need to go to your friends. You don't need to uh, look to otherwise outside the relationship for the support and connection. But it's important to do that, especially if somebody's going through resolving some stuff from, from childhood, from trauma, from stress, to be able to, to focus back on, on your own resources. Yeah, you are two separate people still. Even yes. though you're connected, you have separate lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be so much com more complex if the two people were Gemini's. There would be like four people in the relationship. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, have, I was talking to him last night and say, you're in a healthy relationship. Let that pass go. And he's like, I can't. Okay. Ah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he needs to figure out how he can in order for you guys to move forward. But that's his work, not yours. Yeah, exactly. So you got to wait. It sucks when you can't jump in and fix someone but you never can yeah you Just, can never fix the other person that's that's their yeah i hate to say the word karma because it sounds like they did something wrong to yeah them, but it's um when we're we're i don't believe we're the i believe in reincarnation i believe mm -hmm. that we come around and we have issues that we have to resolve on our own and our our lives, our multiple mm -hmm. lives allow us to resolve those issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. this, that's beside the point. But the yeah. thing is that um, if you feel like uh, you can't be everything for that one, for one person, mm -hmm. and you can perhaps help guide him to get the guidance that he needs, mm -hmm. but you cannot lead a horse to water it. Mm -hmm. You can't let make a horse drink if from the well. His dad passed away. So he's grieving. Oh. oh. Okay. All right. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when I lost my dad, I pulled away from everybody and everything, and I lost my bearings for a long time. And I, I, I shut everybody out because when you lose someone that you love, you, you tend to shut everybody out. It's like I can't rely on people. I can't trust people. I can't be close to people because they just leave anyway, right? That's how I felt. I was yeah. twenty nine. My dad died. It felt like an abandonment. It felt like um, now what am I going to do? I don't, I've lost such a big part. So the grief kind of hit me that way, pushing everyone away. Um, it's tough. It's tough to go through that. But he will come around. I think giving him space would be the best uh, with compassion and, and, and understanding and having your own support. I'm like, you like it. And I'm like, I love picks in this picks. relationship but he's he's like he's like i've never had that um yeah does that make sense sonia what we're talking about there okay yeah. good yeah grief yeah. is something that is extremely personal mm. and it is it is no one else can fix your grief no it's just it's like the ocean Mm -hmm. so you just have to ride the wave out until it, you get mm -hmm. to shore. 
Um, yeah. And it may take, you know, no one can ever tell anybody else, oh, you stop, your time is up for grieving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But grieving is, is actually a lifelong process. I agree. Yeah. And one of the things that can happen, though, when one person is in a relationship and the other person is actively grieving is that you can feel you can feel rejected by that person yeah. who's doing the grieving because they're in their own world and bubble of pain and hurt. And, and they might not want anyone to get close. So they might be actively like pulling, you know, I think like a shell like around themselves, mm -hmm. like, you know, giving this sign of go away. And how can you not interpret that as feeling like you don't love me anymore. You don't care for me anymore. Like you're pushing me out. So um, I don't know if that rings true for you, Sonia, but, uh, but it's his own process. And I don't think it's meant to be personally against you. It's his own thing that he's, he's going through. Um, we're almost at our two o'clock time. Um, I'm just going to check something out. Yes, we're almost at two o'clock. Yeah. So we, I'm sorry that we can't give any more readings, Jewel. Yeah. But if uh, I'm going to put my uh, my um, my page, the link to my page on after this, and a, if you want a reading, um, you can just uh, send me an email to that page or send you know respond to that link, and uh, we can set you up with a reading another time. Thanks for thanks for inviting me in, Dorothy, to come talk today. This is great. wonderful. This is yeah. wonderful. I, I really I, I've actually wanted to do this for a while. Yeah. I'm I'm a very spontaneous person and if something comes up, I just go with it. So, That's great. Yeah. Me too. I don't like doing these things on my own. I like having two people. Like yeah. like I think it's fun to do it with two. Exactly. Two for the price of one, which is free. So everybody <laughs> make a donation, please. Yes, for the animals. Do not forget to donate. If you want, That's if you can. That's the whole purpose to this. Yeah. We want to raise money for the animals. And I mm -hmm. will leave a link to our auction where you can um, buy one of our, our, our artisan gifts and that mm -hmm. way donate to the Amalwin Pet Rescue and mm -hmm. uh, to our Love of Paws Rescue. Yeah, an optional but good karma donation, right? Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I hope everybody we talked to today has a good Yule, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Lily. It's been yeah. a joy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to turn this off, Lillian, so I'll let, I'll let you do the, yeah, the pieces. Yeah. Lillian, the host. Our, our Thanks, Lillian, for hosting us. Yes, thank you very much, Lillian.